guys, so I wanted to chat about my most recent post. If you missed it, please go back and read it. So we are talking about how your menstrual cycle impacts your resting energy metabolism. So I wanted to chat about this and give more clarity because I think a lot of times, um, you know, women who menstruate or those who menstruate, women specifically as a population I work with, um, tend to want to over exaggerate the implications of things their menstrual cycle affect when it comes to either metabolism or exercise. And so there are very real effects and there's are changes that we see across the cycle, but we have to bring them back into the context of what this actually means versus maybe what we are experiencing. So today I reviewed a recent meta-analysis uh, that assessed the effect of resting metabolism across the cycle over like 26 total studies over the last few decades. Um, and what they essentially found is that there's a slight or maybe moderate effect at best, favoring the second half of your menstrual cycle or your luteal phase or about that week right before you get your period. So what does that actually mean and how does that apply to us? The effect does go down when study quality goes down. So keeping in mind that higher quality studies aren't yielding maybe as extreme of an effect. And then it is mixed across the literature. So it's probably about between 43 to 50% of studies do find an effect where about you know the other corresponding 57 to 50% of them don't. So it is very mixed. It's not concrete saying that this is absolutely true for every person. And there's a lot of individuality um, among that data, which comes back to a lot of what we see in menstrual cycle research is that a lot of it comes back to the individual and what you personally experience and feel. So overall, does it appear that there might be a slight to moderate effect? Um, and when you look at some of the individual studies, we find that being about a two to 10% range, which while may, we may be feeling ravenous um, preceding our cycles, it's probably actually the difference of like 30 to 150 calories, maybe two to 300 at most during the day, depending on what our resting metabolism is. So it's not like massively significant magnitudes of increased energy expenditure, but it is very real and it may be there. What the heck is causing this, right? So to some degree, we can attribute it to slightly energy increases, but there's a Davison at all 2007 paper, which is a little bit older. This other paper is a 2020 paper, so a little more recent, that uh, is more of a review of this data. And it essentially says that like really reports of macronutrient intake across the cycle are variable and they're not consistent, but it appears that we are eating more carbs, protein, and fat. And some of that is actually warranted and we need it and I'll talk about it in another post. Um, but Particularly, it's hard to tell because there's an increased consumption of carbs and fats, and we can't really tease out if it's due to increased carbohydrate or fat car cravings alone, because we tend to eat things like chocolate or donuts or cookies, and I know we think of those as carbs, but they're actually carb-fat combos, so it's hard to say, well, which one is it really? But this increased carbohydrate consumption and carbohydrate carbohydrate craving is very real. Um, and it shows that women specifically crave chocolate more than men and that only chocolate itself can kind of replicate that satiety or satisfaction of eating it. So those things are real and reported in the literature. Of course, let's not miss the forest for the trees. Things like mood, sleep, stress, activity level, all of these things also do still affect our cravings and or like food eating habits. So it's not only just your cycle, there's other confounding factors, which we generally encourage you to regulate in a healthy way to begin with, like stress and sleep quality and stuff like that. Um, but these things aren't fake and real. And there are shifts in the, what your body favors macronutrient wise during your cycle. And I do want to talk about this more in depth in a later, later post, but generally that increased cravings does not necessarily not make sense. You are less insulin sensitive. You're maybe relying a bit more on fat and a little less glycolytic during this phase. So it would make sense for your body to be like, Hey, we kind of need carbs to do what we're trying to do. Well, while also, you know, explaining some of the food cravings that we're having. And so all this to say, you're not broken. And if you are a woman who maybe engages in intentional weight loss or cutting or dieting, um, maybe give yourself some grace and eat at maintenance during these weeks or just 